All right, welcome to the first video on uh, the VOC uh, channel. Call it the VOC, Voice of Caleb, kind of same thing. I wanted to pay homage uh, to uh, where I grew up, where I came from, the village of Kasopolis. So I thought it'd be uh, it'd be good to go with the VOC uh, because you know the Voice of Caleb, where I came from, the village of Kasopolis. I thought it'd be perfect. So you know I've done YouTube before, you know. Back a couple years ago you know now I wanted to really get back into it, amp it up as I continue to build my uh, portfolio resume for my last year of uh, in college at Michigan State so I wanted to kind of get back into it kind of feel learn you know some new things with how YouTube's going now and uh, kind of just continue to buff out a resume for uh, when I graduate uh, in this channel I want to do weekly videos college Pro football, sports, baseball, basketball, hell, I might do soccer, I don't know, we'll figure it out as it goes. Uh, but, you know, this first episode I want to kick off with, uh, you know, some college for this week. Next week I'll get into the pros, I want to give it a few weeks before I really make an uh, assessment on pro football. But one thing I will talk about pro football, the funniest thing I think I've heard all week, probably in a long time, Carson Wentz sprained both his ankles, I don't fucking get it. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, that is the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, how do you sprain both ankles? You know, I, I don't get how he's walking, if it's that bad, but it is what it is. Uh, also in this, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to cuss. I'm going to be who I am. You know, I'm not going to be scripted in any way. I got stuff wrote down on a piece of paper just so I can kind of reference it and think about it, but this isn't a scripted show. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, we're going to figure it out as I go. But I'm going to be me. I'm going to talk the way I talk. I have a computer here. I'm not even looking at the fucking computer. I wanted to make it look like I'm somewhat professional. But I don't really care. Uh, so, as you've seen from the title of this video, Alabama's not my number one team in college football as of right now. I didn't think that coming into the season. It, it just They're just not right now. Yeah, they're number one AP ranked. And I'll go through every top 25 team in the AP poll and kind of uh, reference them and talk about them a little bit. But... So, so to start out with Alabama, they are number one in AP, but I don't think they're the number one team right now. There's no way that they are. If they were the number one team, you would, you know, you would just feel it, look at it. But right now, I don't think they are. Um, they destroyed Miami. Miami turns out to be a terrible team. Miami sucks. Horrible. You know, they had Florida down, I think, 21 in the first quarter, destroying Florida. And then they let Florida get back in the game. Now, Florida's a good program, but no one thought Florida could play with Alabama. They were a 14-point, I think 14.5-point favorite. So they kind of let them get back in the game. It got closer than, you know, anybody thought. So as of right now, I don't think they are. Now, could they be? Yes. I think Alabama, without a doubt, could be the number one team in the country. I think they'll be fine. Bryce Young has been tearing it up, though. This kid, you know, I didn't know what to think about him coming into the season. Really good. Now, I'll move on to my number, who number two in AP, but who I think is the number one team, Georgia. Georgia is the number one team in college football right now. Through three weeks of the year, they're the number one. They might have one of the best defenses ever. This defense is loaded. They have just destroyed teams. They've only given up in three games. They've given up 216 yards a game, 7.7 .7 points per game, and only 70 rush yards per game. That is nuts to me. Right now, they are the number one team, as you look at it, in my opinion. If they played Alabama right now, I think they beat them. Now, that has nothing to do with the Kirby playing Saban. Saban's never lost to an assistant. But if they played right now, I think Georgia would win. Now, Georgia has, they have Vandy this week. Don't destroy Vandy. The next two weeks, though, they have Arkansas, who's been a really good surprise team. We'll talk about them later. And they play Auburn, who Auburn's building. I think, I think Georgia destroys Auburn, just like I think Alabama would destroy Auburn. But as of right now, the way it sits right now, Georgia's the number one team in the country, in my opinion. Them and Alabama should both be in the playoff, and they should both be undefeated when they play in the SEC championship game. Oregon is number three. To me right now, it's too early to tell about Oregon. I don't know what the hell Oregon is. Uh, yeah, they beat Ohio State, uh, but they also gave up a lot of yards in an Ohio State game. And 
you know, I don't know how good Ohio State is, but the one thing with Oregon is they did beat Fresno State. Fresno State beat UCLA, who I think UCLA is the Pac-12 South champion. I think they will be. So I give Oregon credit for that, and they did beat Ohio State. But I think it's too early to tell a little bit. I don't know about their quarterback. don't trust them right now, but Oregon's got a good shot. They, they just do. Move on to Oklahoma. Look, everybody's coming into the season. It's like their defense, their defense. Waiting on the defense. The offense is always going to be great. The offense is going to be fine. It's about the defense. Can they ramp up the defense? Now, in the Big 12, they should win the Big 12. I mean, it's the Big fucking 12. That's Oklahoma's conference to win. It should be easily won. Uh, they had a scare with Nebraska. Look, Nebraska, better than probably what their record shows. It's a rivalry game. They haven't played in a while. Oklahoma, I think, is still a little lackadaisical, but they'll slowly get it figured out, and they'll be better moving on. Uh, the fifth team in the country, who I think is the best team in the Big Ten right now, uh, Iowa. Iowa right now in the Big Ten, there is not a team on their side of the division I think beats them. I don't think Wisconsin beats them. I don't think Minnesota beats them. I don't think there's anybody on that side that can beat them. I think that they get in to the Big Ten Championship game undefeated, and then we go from there with Iowa. That's just how good Iowa is. Uh, moving on to number six, Penn State, who I think is the best team on their side of the Big Ten. Uh, and, you know, I have it here in my notes. Are they 1A, 1B uh, with Iowa for the best team in the Big Ten? I think you can argue it. Um, they're really good. They went into Wisconsin, beat Wisconsin, a pretty good Wisconsin team. Uh, they beat Auburn this past weekend. Um, so I think Penn State's got a lot going for it. I think they have a driver's seat to Indy for the Big Ten Championship, and I think Iowa does. I think that if I looked right now and I said, I think these two teams will clash. Um, I think this is the year that Penn State could beat Ohio State. Um, I just do. I think this Penn State team is good. Um, their defense is outstanding. You watch the defense play and you're like, wow. So I think they have a legitimate shot. Seven, Texas a and Don't really know much about. Uh, you know, they played some lesser opponents so far the year. Uh, they play Arkansas this week. You'll find out about them this week because Arkansas is surprisingly good in the SEC. Um, if Texas A&M destroys them, it's like, okay. But the real test for Texas A&M is in two weeks when they play Alabama. That's where you really going to know, are they legit? How good is Texas A&M? Moving on to Cincinnati. Look, Cincinnati is really good. For a non-Power 5 team, they are really, really good. Uh, they're eighth right now in the country. They just beat Indiana. Kind of, it was close. They kind of pulled away in the fourth. More of a lashing, I think, of Indiana. I don't think Indiana's that good this year, but to beat a program like that that had a good year last year with some good players coming back, to beat them the way that they did, that's really good. Cincinnati has a bye this week, and then they play Notre Dame. I think that they can beat Notre Dame. I, I legitimately do. They have a really good coach. Coach, excuse me. They have a really good quarterback. It's all you really need right now. And they have a legitimate shot, in my opinion, to make a playoff, but they have to beat Notre Dame, and then they have to win out. But they have a shot at making the playoffs, because I think this year it's going to be kind of crazy. So they have a shot. They're locked for New Year's Six, I think, right now. But moving on, I, I, they can make the playoff easily. Number nine, Clemson. Look, Clemson has a great defense. Offense, we're still trying to figure it out. I think that they will slowly figure it out on offense, but, you know, they play, the conference sucks, the ACC is not a very good conference, they should destroy in the conference, but their defense is really good, I don't think their defense has given up a touchdown this year, that is really good, their defense has only given up 7 points a game, and they've only given up 230, 263 yards a game, that's really good, now they had a close game with Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech's better than their record says, they just are, they have a good coach, but... Clemson is really good, and, you know, they easily could have beat Georgia. They, they could have. I mean, they had that game if they wanted to, but Georgia was really good that night. Their defense played really good. If Clemson had a regular offense, I think they beat Georgia that night. And, look, I think Georgia is the best team in the country right now. But I think Clemson, they still have a legitimate shot. This year just feels a little different about Clemson. They don't have that aura of, like, 
you know, we're going to lose to them. They have that aura of, like, they could be beat. 10 at Ohio State, I don't fucking know, dude. I have no clue about Ohio State. The offense is going to be good. Their quarterback's not playing this week. They play Akron. I mean, they should beat Akron easily. Um, but I don't know about their defense. I don't know. Their defense was not good last year. It's been non-existent almost this year. Uh, they lose to Oregon at home. No one thought that would happen. But the one good thing with Ohio is they found their running back. The freshman, Henderson, had a shit ton of yards this last week. They have figured out kind of their identity, I think, on offense. you got to run the ball. It's Ohio State thing. You run the ball. You play action off of it. They do have great wide receivers. Their offense will be no problem. It's their defense. And this year we're seeing in the Big Ten a lot of teams are better than I think people thought, even better than I thought that they were going to be. So it's not going to be easy, but they, ha they have a shot. But as of right now, sitting here, you know, it's going to be a lot for them. 11 with Florida. I didn't think Florida was going to play as good as they did against Alabama. Dan Mullen is a great coach. But the question with Florida is, are they as good as Georgia? I don't think so. So I think that they'll be second in the SEC East behind Georgia. I don't think they beat Georgia. But way better than I thought they were. Now, 12 with Notre Dame. Look, if you know me, you know I'm a diehard Notre Dame fan. I could go on all fucking day about this team. Because they're just, they're not as good as they have been in the past. The offensive line isn't as good. Defensive line is, is pretty stout. The linebacking core, there's one guy who has like 35 tackles through three games. That's good. You know, the, the thing that's helping the defense, if, if Notre Dame didn't have this one player on defense, they would probably be 0-3. Kyle Hamilton is the reason that Notre Dame defensively is where they're at. If they didn't have him, I legitimately think they'd be 0-3. And we'd be having the conversation, is Brian Kelly, should be should he be fired? Um, Jack Cohen should not be the quarterback, in my opinion. That's just watching the games. Tyler Buchner should be the freshman. He's way more dynamic. Cohen is not existing as a runner. That hurts Notre Dame's offense. And, you know, that's why I truly believe that Kyron Williams... Chris Tyree haven't been able to get going. Now, Cohen makes good plays. Look, he played great against Florida State, but he's not going to win you a ton of games in the matter of your big games. They play Wisconsin this week. I think Wisconsin beats them. It pains me to say that, but I just think Wisconsin beats them. Now, if Wisconsin does not beat them, Notre Dame wins, I'm like, okay. But then they have Cincinnati. They have a lot of tough games coming up. I think the next five games are tough as hell. And all the teams that they play come off a of bye. Wisconsin off a of bye this week. So we'll see. But there's a lot that they need to figure out. And will they? I don't know. But it's going to be tough sledding this year. 13-year-old Miss. This is a team I love. I love a lot. There is not a fun. There is not a funner team. That's even a fucking word. In college football than Old Miss. Old Miss is so fun to watch. Offensively, fuck, it's so fun. They're the best offense in the in the country. They could blow up the SEC like no other. You know, they play in the SEC West, which is tough. You got Bama, you got LSU, you got A&M, you got Auburn. It's tough, but I think they could blow it up. They have a way better defense than they did last year. The defense last year sucked. Their offense was great. This year... Offense is great. Defense is way better. So they have a shot. They have a bye this week, and then they play Alabama. Added Alabama. They played Alabama really tough last year. They put a lot of points on them. If they do it again this year, you know, I think people start to look and go, you know, this team's really good. They average 52.7 points a game, over 635 yards on offense. Their defense this year, 20 points a game, 340 yards. Way better than it was last year. They continue this trend. Lane Kiffin continues this. They have a chance to really blow up the SEC. 14 at Iowa State. I mean, I need more time to watch. I don't trust Matt Campbell as a coach. Um, I mean, they still have a shot in the Big 12 because it's a Big 12, but I don't trust them. I haven't trusted them over the years, and I, that's all I got to say. I just don't trust Iowa State. They can't beat Iowa, so what the hell does it make me think that they can beat Oklahoma? BYU, this is maybe, there might not be a hotter team 
other than BYU, just the way that they've won. They've won their last two games against two ranked teams that people have really, really thought they were going to be good. They have a chance in a New Year's Six Bowl as you stand right here. They legitimately do. They have a chance to win out. Uh, they're hot. 16 with Arkansas, this is a great surprise team. Nobody thought Arkansas would be where they're at. I didn't think they'd beat Texas, and I didn't think they'd be 3 0. But sadly, I think with Arkansas, I think the fairy tale love story is over. They play AM this week, then they have to go to Georgia, and then they have to go to Old Miss. I mean, they easily could be 3 and 3. Coastal Carolina, I mean, it's fucking Coastal Carolina. I don't know. Haven't got to watch them that much. They have a shot at a New Year's Six. They had a close game with Buffalo. I don't know how good fucking Buffalo is. I don't watch Buffalo football. Um, they play UMass this week. Look, I mean, like I said, it's Coastal fucking Carolina. You know, they should win out. They have a chance at a New Year's Six. Wisconsin, like I've said before, talking about Notre Dame, I th they, they're good. But I think they're the second best team on their side against Iowa. But they're good. Their defense is really good. Their offense, I think they still have to figure a lot out. I think they thought this quarterback was going to be better than what he is. So I think they're slowly figuring out. But I think they beat Notre Dame this week. I just do. 19 at Michigan. Look, it pains me to say this, but Michigan has a really good team. Um, I hate Michigan with every bone in my body. But I thought coming in this year they could be 9-3, and 10-2. and two. They're right on that track. But I'll say this. People are going to hate that I say this. They haven't played anybody. Now, I know they played Western. Western beat Pitt. Pitt sucks. And then ACC, that sucks. Western's still Western. But what I like about Michigan is they're playing bad opponents, but they're destroying them. That's what you're supposed to do when you play bad teams. So I like that. And they're running the ball really good. Number 20. I can put them in with Michigan, Michigan State. Look, I'm a student here. Nobody thought this team would be good as they are this year. They're really good. They're fun to watch. They destroyed Miami. Like I said earlier with Alabama, Miami sucks, but they destroyed them in Miami. It was hot as fuck down there. They beat them. I kind of put these two teams, Michigan and Michigan State, together. The question mark is, are they better than Ohio State? Are they better than Penn State? I don't know, um, but they have a legitimate shot to be 6-0, and both when they play each other in a couple weeks. And I think that... Uh, that could be very, very fun. Now, Michigan, go back to Michigan. They have to go to Wisconsin next week. They haven't won there in a while, so that's going to be a tough game. But I think they have a shot that the, both these teams could be undefeated when they play in a couple weeks. North Carolina, look, it's North Carolina. Mac Brown's a good coach. They've recruited well. They should win their side of the ACC. They should go and play Clemson in the ACC. We'll have to see. They have a good quarterback, so we'll see. Fresno at 22. Fresno's been fun as fuck to watch. Um, they beat UCLA last week. I didn't think that they could beat UCLA. I thought UCLA was a legitimate team uh, in the country. They beat them. Uh, they didn't lose by much to Oregon, who everybody's in love with. They're the best team in the country. So I think Fresno, I think if you're looking at the non-Power 5, they have a legitimate shot to make the playoff. Not the playoff. I mean, a New Year's Six Bowl. Fucking playoff. That was dumb. Uh, they have a legitimate shot to make a New Year's Six Bowl because they've almost, they barely lost to Oregon, played Oregon tough, and then they beat UCLA, who I, who I think will slowly creep back up in the next few weeks. Uh, 23 at Auburn, look, I think they've been good, but they have to play in the, SC, in the SEC. I don't think that they're, I think their season slowly starts to go down. They play Georgia State this week, they'll win. Um... Yeah, they had a shot to beat Penn State. But they have to play at LSU, and then they play Georgia the next two weeks. I don't... I mean, they could beat LSU, but Georgia, they're not beating Alabama. I don't even know if they beat Ole Miss this year. 24 at UCLA. I think that they can still win the Pac-12 over. I think that they are that good with that coaching staff to win the Pac-12 overall. Fresno was a better team than they thought, and... You know, I just think Fresno kind of came in swooping. All right, I'm back. My fucking battery died, of course I did. In my first fucking YouTube video that I do, of course the fucking battery dies on me. Only my luck. All right, so where I was, where I left off, I was talking about Doug Peterson. Look, guys won a Super Bowl. He's 53. I think it's a great hire for USC. Um, I think he brings a lot to it. Like I said, he's a very raw, raw guy. He feels college to me. He always felt college to me in the NFL, but 
It's proven. Guys won a Super Bowl. My last uh, top candidate. I got more names, but these are the top four. You know, you call these guys first, in my opinion. Uh, I had one A being Eric Bieniemy, one B is Deion Sanders. This guy knows it. He gets it. He gets what the kids want nowadays. He would be perfect. And a lot of people are going to, well, you know, he hasn't coached a lot, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. This guy knows the kids. He's 55, but he feels, I mean, Deion to me feels like he's 25. He, he just does. He feels cooler than everybody else. He just, everything he does, he gets it. And these kids will get it. And I think in L.A. he could thrive. He understands it. He could build a great staff. I just think Dion would be a great decision. I think Florida State, they regret not hiring Dion Sanders two years ago. They do. Uh, and then if those guys say no, Jeff Halfley at Boston College has done a great job. He was actually the defense coordinator at Ohio State before getting the Boston College job two years ago. Look what's happened with the Ohio State's defense since he left. <laughs> Dud. Uh, P.J. Fleck, look, guy's 40. I think he can hype anybody up. Now you might want to say, well, you know, L.A. might be too big for him. Yeah, but he can, he can get kids to rally behind him. You know, I think that he can get anybody to rally behind him. And that's what you kind of need and want. You Look, USC has had, you know, the last couple of years, Clay Helton's just been, uh, you know, he's quiet. He's been on the sideline. He just doesn't feel like a guy that I'm going to get behind for something that needs to be done. Just doesn't seem like that guy. It's too quiet. You need guys that are could get in, enthusiasize the kids, relate with them, really bring a presence to that program. And then look, now there's gonna be there's a lot of names of like, you know, the big fish, of like who you should get. These are the guys that I, I don't think USC has a shot at. Urban Meyer, I don't think they have a shot. Um a lot of people have talked about USC doesn't want them because of his past um a lot of people wanted him last year the president didn't want him kind of stepped in and said no i don't think urban leaves the jags um after a year i just don't think that's i just i just don't think deep down he does um bruce feldman who does fox sports he could have the texas job last year if he wanted it i don't know how true that is um i guess he turned that down so i don't know um I just don't foresee him leaving the Jaguars after one year. Uh, Bob Stoops, I don't think Bob Stoops leaves retirement. I think he likes what he's doing too much. Um, he is very Oklahoma to me. I don't think he wants to go anywhere else and coach. That's just what I believe. Uh, and the last guy, a lot of people are talking about Lane Kiffin. Look, Lane Kiffin's a way better coach than he was when he had the USC job 10 years ago. And, you know, I think Old Miss has a chance to be really good. And I think a lot of people, I think, as the season goes on, will, I think, think about it more. But I just don't think Lane would ever go back there. And I just don't think it happens. It's fun to think about, like, oh, you know, Lane Kiffin going back. But I don't think there's a shot that that happens. Um, okay, I think that's going to wrap it up for the first episode here. Like I said before, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing trying to figure it out uh, i'm gonna try to do weekly um like i said i'll talk pro next week uh, i just kind of wanted to like i did with college i wanted to give it a few weeks um before i really dove into it and started talking about it um so i you know i'll get into it more to recap this episode uh, i think georgia's the best team right now uh in the country and i think usc needs to hire eric band or either deon sanders i mean it's that's just what I believe. Um, thanks for watching this episode. Like, subscribe, share. Thank you.